there's so many crazy changes going on and all these teams are getting shaken up. I'm just really excited for LCS. On CLG, I've finally been given the opportunity to shine and prove to everyone that I'm not just some player that's been overhyped. I want to do this year the way that I should have done it my first year and just not really have any regrets. I've been wanting this ever since there's been LCS. I needed to drop everything to try and go professional. Here we are. 저는 일부 리그 대회 아직 나온 적은 없지만 이번 기회에 이름을 알릴 좋을 좋은 기회라 생각해서 좋은 성적을 낼 생각입니다. When we got relegated, I felt kind of down, but I knew that I could definitely make it back. Luckily, Gravity picked me up as a new AD. There's definitely a big shoes coming in to replace High. We might start out a bit slow, but I think by the end of the season, we will be one of the best, if not the best team in NA. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to opening day of the North American League Championship Series Summer Split. Now we're back in Los Angeles in front of this fired up crowd to bring you the next chapter in the LCS. Crepo will be happy. We've got Bard in the house and a lot of fans out there wearing their team pride. And of course, here's Incarnation getting in a little practice time before making his debut in the NALCS. That's going to be up against TSM Santorin. Loco Doco making their way to their stage earlier. They have some redemption on their minds after a showing at MSI that was not as well as they had hoped. Hello, everyone. I'm James Dash Patterson, and it's great to have you with us as new teams, new players, as well as a slew of veteran faces take to the stage today. And joining me on the analyst desk, we've got Aiden Zyrene Moon, Sam Kobe Hartman Kensler, and David Freak Turley. Gentlemen, a whole nother split of LCS coming our way. You guys ready? Oh, yeah. Good morning. <laughs> Give me like. 20 minutes for the first game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a 20 minute break while Freak gets ready uh, for the North American LCS. No, we've got a few new squads joining the LCS this split. So here are the 10 teams that will be competing in North America. Enemy Esports was automatically qualified after their first place finish in the Spring Challenger Series. Then Team Dragon Knights defeated Winter Fox to claim their spot. And gentlemen, the God, the split hasn't even started yet, but it feels like some of the teams at the top of the table already have a lot to prove here. Uh, you must be talking about TSM, of course. You mentioned MSI. They had um, an honestly embarrassing performance at an international event, which is what they wanted to focus completely on as a team. You know, their early game was lackluster. Almost every single game they had a deficit by like 10 minutes. So there's a lot of things that TSM are out to prove here. Um, they also had problems adapting, which is something that we've tracked with this team for a very long time. But even to one new champion, even on stage with their coach there, having a hard time trying to adapt to things. And, and then in-game as well, the team also not able to do that. So definitely a lot of things for TSM to prove once they're back on home soil in North America and they feel a lot more comfortable. Yeah, and the team I want to talk about, Enemy, new to the league. They haven't even had to play against an LCS team yet for their spot because they got that auto promotion. And we've seen in the past... Being successful in Challenger doesn't always translate to being successful in the LCS. And I, I'm really always interested to see how they stack up. Inox in the mid lane coming back as a mid laner this time instead of a top laner. He's shown that he can adapt to different champions and the team is really built around him. And he looks like a completely different player now. He seems so much happier on this team and he seems to be more motivated as well. He has a good say in what they do. And Enemy, I think, is the team we need to look out for. And I think they're going to end at least top five. Yeah, I tend to agree. I think Enemy's going to do pretty well, but the other challenger team that's coming in this split, TDK, I think it's a very different story for them. So bad news first, they're missing three of their starters for at least the first week, possibly much longer. So they've got uh, new mid laner, new AD carry, new support, all coming up from the challenger scene, teams that actually failed in the challenger qualifiers, so they're like even kind of the bottom dregs there in, in a certain way. Oh! Uh, and, and I mean, they're, they're, good, they're good players, but like there's a reason Scrape these guys... Scrape the bucket! <laughs> But they're the best of what they can do, right? They're missing, you know, two Koreans and a Canadian player who don't have visas yet. It's a rough situation for TDK. 
The good news for TDK is at least they've got like the the core that made them good, which is Seraph in the top lane. Seraph has gotten so much better since his time on Counter Logic Gaming. Uh, he's actually playing a carry style. His Nidalee is stupid good. It like hard carries <laughs> games where his team's down 12 kills, but they still win. Like Seraph's the real deal here. They've got Kez for some jungle synergy, and they've got to like build the team up from from square one, which is going to be a really rough road ahead for TDK. And we have seen teams that had to start uh, LCS split with a bunch of subs have success with those subs That's before true. too. So there's possibility that they could win some games. Sure, yeah, and, and if you hit on 20, sometimes you get 21. <laughs> I'm not saying it's going to be likely, though. Yeah, and I had to sandwich that with some more bad news, because when they get back, they didn't really play with Emperor or Ninja in the first place, so they have to get that synergy going. So this team is not going to come online until at least week four. So right now, we pretty much just get to judge Kez and Seraph and what their synergy is like for these first few weeks. So hold well, on. Yeah, a tough couple weeks ahead for this team, maybe. But in addition to trying to conquer the North American LCS, teams will be looking ahead to Worlds. So let's see how the teams are stacked up on the championship point leaderboard. Team Solo Mid finished the spring split in first and banked 90 points, followed by Cloud9 with 70 and Team Liquid with 50. Now the team that finishes the summer split in first automatically qualifies for Worlds, while the second berth goes to the team with the most championship points. The final spot goes to the winner of a regional qualifier which is seeded by, you guessed it, championship points. So they become incredibly important for teams with international aspirations. Now let's move to today's schedule. Up first, it's a replay of our spring finals with Cloud9 versus defending champions Team Solo Mid. Then Team Dragon Knights will take on Team Liquid, followed by CounterLogic Gaming versus Team Dignitas. Now there's always a lot of shuffling between splits, so who are some of the players that you guys are going to be looking at this first week? Uh, first one for me, CLG's new mid laner, Poe Belter. I have so much belief in this guy. It feels like every single split, we're like, all right, CLG, this is the split, all right. But Poe Belter is super good. I think he's top three mid laners in the NALCS right now. Um, Belter, though, for his entire career so far in the NALCS, he's been on Evil Geniuses and Winter Fox, teams he can't really rely on, teams where his other lanes are losing, and he's like one of the sole carries here. Poe Belter has a good team now. He said uh, CLG was, quote, they're way better at, like, everything, comparing them to Winter Fox. So, uh, Belter on a good team now. I want to see what changes with Poe Belter, and I want to see what changes with CLG. And, of course, one of his former teammates, Alltech, found himself on a new team this split as well. Yeah, and unlike the Poe Belter change, I think Alltech is more of a side grade. So, the reason that, that Alltech is on gravity right now is that Cop retired. And Cop's actually very, very good as a player, but he wanted to go do something else. Cop's now coaching the team anyway. Um, but Alltech is roughly as good as Cop, I would say. Uh, and now he's got to work out, okay, how do I deal with, how do I deal with Bunny Fufu? -Foo? How does Gravity do with their new jungler move? It's a it's a sort of a growth time for Gravity. But here is Alltech, once again, on a good team. Gravity was a playoff team. If Alltech wants to prove that he's a top dog, not just a good AD carry, here's the team to prove it. All right, now I want to move a little bit to another guy who hasn't moved teams. He stayed in the same spot. It's Rush from TIP. Now, this guy, he let me down in the semifinals, but I still love him because Rush, in the, in the offseason, he has been nothing but motivated. He hit number one in Korean solo queue. He dethroned Faker in solo queue over there. And this guy, he is not complacent with his play style. He wants to get better constantly. And if MSI taught us anything, it's that being a, a jungler who waits until the mid game to make moves is not going to cut it. So I think this season, the rookie from last season, a lot of people are going to be watching him and trying to do what he does in the early game being proactive, making the first move, because that's going to transition to dominance in the international stage. All pretty good points. I think that the number one change to watch is going to be Incarnation, a change to a top two team in North America, and a change to one of the biggest, most important roles on that team. Replacing High is a really, really big task just because of how much High brought to the team. And Incarnation is such a different player from High, I'm very excited to see how this affects the overall team because even with Medios taking over the shot calling, as they've said many times, he was already starting to do that when High was on the team. There are so many things um, that you get with a solo queue star player when you bring him in, which is what all the hype around Incarnation is from, is from his solo queue, um, that are different for team play. And this guy has not had any competitive experience at all. This is going to be his first time on stage. Um, they tend to take a lot more risks because the people that get very high in solo queue uh, try and get an advantage and use that advantage to carry the game themselves. They feel a lot of pressure to do things themselves. High was a very selfless player, 
concentrated a lot on vision and a lot on team play. So we'll see how well Incarnation can integrate with those yeah. guys. 129 games with the same roster. It's Ooh. definitely going to be strange watching them take the stage yeah. without that same roster. Now, the decision to change the team lineup did not come lightly for Cloud9 and took an emotional toll on the close-knit group. But ultimately, they believe the change will have a positive impact for the team. I've been like best friends with Hai for like three years now. Having him go was was very depressing for me, and I, it, it was very sad. Last split, we started out very weak. We were struggling a lot at the beginning of the season. We were losing all of our matches. Cloud9 starts the season off 0-2 in the first week. Hai not performing up to a Cloud9 level. One of the things we've always done well as a team is the trust we have in each other, and especially in highs shot calling. But once we started losing a lot of games, I feel like that trust sort of fell apart. I wanted to make sure again that I had the data to kind of prove there was something going on. After talking about it with High, we decided was, this was a time to actually step down. I don't think the roster change was ever initially brought up by any of the players. I think it was just uh, Jack looking out for us. No one really wanted to go either our way to say, hey, I think we need to uh, change the player out here. I didn't want to break something that was working really well, but it was clear something, we weren't working together as smoothly as we should. From the beginning, we were seemed to click and just do amazingly together and just play together so well. And I think it was an amazing ride just to play with them for so long. We did a tryout where we had a lot of good players come in. It went better than expected, and we ended up going with Incarnation for mid. It seemed to me like there were a bunch of friends who all had passion for the game, and they worked really well together. It's very important that you have a team who like also functions well outside of the game. So that's something that was very attractive to uh, about C C9 to me. I talked with Hai about it, and he, he had some real reservations about his, uh, his history uh, because he had been banned. It was something I also thought about too. He was pretty concerned, but uh, we had his blessings to give it a shot. The whole experience taught me a lot about myself. I think I still have a lot to learn regarding how to play as a team and whatnot. I still have kind of a solo queue mentality, but I think that's why they also picked me was because I guess you could say I had have the most potential. I think as long as we do it right, we can mold him into a, an extremely good team player. We knew that he would be able to help us grow as a team and take us really far. And I think Incarnation was pretty good for us. He's really good mechanically and he's, I think he really wants to prove himself. There's definitely a big shoes coming in to replace High. I think that it's not so much replacing how he plays, it's just, we're just gonna have to move forward and play the game a bit differently. It's a long split. We just need to focus on getting better week in, week out. I don't expect us to come in super hot to the split. I think it might take a few games. I'm for sure ready for week one. I'm very excited and we have first game against TSM. We are number one for about a year and then TSM started stealing it back from us, so there's a pretty big rivalry between us and them at this point. I want to win NA and it means a lot, but the ultimate goal is to go to Worlds and do well at Worlds. We haven't, you know, played a match in a few weeks and we didn't get to go to MSI and play there, so I'm basically just itching to play again. I think it's actually also pretty funny that, um, you know, Incarnation has all this fame from, oh, he would get an account banned and then immediately jump up to rank one on a different account. High is actually still higher rated in solo queue than Incarnation is right now <laughs> on North America. Well, it's definitely trial. And greater than EU, duh. <laughs> oh, I, mean, oh, I did not realize this is the conclusion. <laughs> right, definitely trial by fire, though, here, throwing him into his first game against Bjergsen in the mid lane. So you talk about, well, he's a solo queue master. His, his laning prowess should be there. Well, he's going to have to step it up and showcase it against Bjergsen.
Yeah, I mean, there are things that happen in competitive that you don't expect, like uh, two-minute ganked by four people in the mid lane. <laughs> you know, that could throw somebody off. Yeah. Well, we'll just have to see. Of course, we want to get your take on the new NALCS landscape. Today, we're asking which roster change are you most excited to see in action and why. Tweet your answers to us at LOL Esports and use the hashtag LCS so we can highlight a few of them later in the broadcast. But now it's time for game one, so let's send it over to the casters to kick off the day. Thank you very much, Dash and guys. Hello, everyone. I am Rivington Biz in the third here along with Joshua, Jat, Leesman, and man, it's been a while. Yeah, it feels like just yesterday we're here for the uh, playoffs here between Cloud9 and TSM, and every time we start the split, same as old. As a little same. bit of Tallahassee in between. All right, we're starting things off with our game of the week, Cloud9 versus Team Solo Mid. It should be a good one. Yeah, it's a storied rivalry at this point, and if we only look since 2014, the head-to-head -head in this matchup has been very close. Cloud9 would actually only hold a two-game lead at that point, and also, the winner of this matchup is in the first game of the split in the previous three splits. That winner has gone on to have the best record in the North American LCS regular season for the first place there. We may know what's going to happen then after this game. The analyst has mentioned it, but Team Solo Mid are coming off a very disappointing performance at the Midseason Invitational and are out for a little redemption, you could say. Yeah, Riv, nobody was more disappointed in TSM's performance than TSM themselves because they are a team that's very focused on competing internationally. And the main area that they will have to work on is really just broadening their approach strategy-wise yeah. because... They've been able to win in North America with relatively narrow strategies, but that clearly didn't work internationally, and they should be broadening that out here. Absolutely. Something definitely happened out there at MSI. Meanwhile, Cloud9, a group that has long been the most stable team in a perpetually shifting field, has made their first change to their lineup. High, the primary shot caller for the team, stepped down to take a managerial position within the organization. So that mind, that voice is still there, and taking over now is Incarnation in the mid lane. Yeah. It's going to be pretty amazing. To welcome him to the LCS, we're giving Incarnation the featured matchup treatment as he faces off against our defending MVP, Bjergsen. Two Danes enter, one Dane leaves. It has to be the featured matchup, Riv, because, you know, Incarnation, he's incredibly skilled mechanically, but he is unproven yeah. in this team environment. Remember, he's never played on the LCS stage, especially considering he's on Cloud9, where team coordination yep. has been a key cornerstone to their success. Meanwhile, we look at Bjergsen, and he's just a monster across the board. You know, he's mechanically skilled. Not only is he very comfortable with his team, but... They do march to the beat of his drum because he's also the shot caller. That's why he's the two-time MVP of the North American yep. LCS. It's a pretty tough matchup on the first day for Incarnation to have to deal with. Right, and we asked Santorin how he thought the battle for the mid lane supremacy will go. Call him biased, but he's giving it to Bjergsen. Um, I feel like Bjergsen is a more uh, versatile mid laner. He can also play the more passive role. I think Bjergsen in a 1v1, I think Bjergsen would win maybe 90 out of 100 times because I think like right now Bjergsen is just the more dominant mid laner. But I wouldn't say that Incarnation can't pull off a win against in Bjergsen on stage. Like I'm, I still think Incarnation can do that, but I would still put the favor to Bjergsen. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, I should hope he puts the favor to his own mid laner. Otherwise, that would be some trust issues right there. Absolutely. Well, we'll see how the trust goes as the game's about to play out. Let's check out the starting lineups. On the blue side, it's Cloud9. That's Balls in the top lane. Meteos in the jungle. Mid lane is Incarnation. Sneaky at 80 carry. And Lemonation at support. Yes, and of course, on the red side here, we have Team Solo Mid. Tyrus in the top lane. Santorin in the jungle. Bjergsen in the mid lane. Then we got Wild Turtle and Lust Boy as AD carry and support. So there's kind of two things the teams themselves have given us to look at here. Whether TSM, the fans <laughs> think they have, have kind of righted the ship and can come out strong. They said scrims were good, then bad, then good, and then they couldn't pull anything of the good at MSI. Yeah. Cloud9, they said they haven't played in a little bit, at least a match. Obviously the scrims have been there with Incarnation, so we'll see what the stage provides.